Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we are taking a look at another Saving Your Disaster campaign. This one here is going to be called the Avenger Shutdown Disaster. And I'll give you a few pointers of what happened and also how this uh, Saving Your Disaster campaign is hopefully going to go down. So first of all, a bit of the background. The gentleman who sent uh, the safe game file mentioned that he got uh, shut down uh, by the aliens via the UFO dark event relatively early in the campaign, which means we're going to see ballistic weapons and a lot of uh, them. Unfortunately, uh, they, being the author of the campaign, did not really uh, understand uh, the shutdown, uh, the uh, Avenger shutdown well enough, so he kind of brought the sort of A team, but with really suboptimal gear. So we're dealing with, and we're also jumping right into the action. So we're dealing with essentially three um, assaults, all with normal shotguns, corporals up to sergeants. We have one skirmisher here one sniper and one grenadier looks like someone who isn't valuing uh, specialists a lot uh, we definitely need to change that uh, that's already core mistake number one core mistake number two is uh, this is on legendary difficulty so there's really not enough room for any uh, shall we say shenanigans or experiments and going in with three shotguns in a rather open field long end uh, long ended mission not the best idea i potentially would have at least in this team composition chosen one or two of uh, the rangers to go with assault rifles but be it as it may it is currently the situation that we're finding ourselves in i don't know anything else about the safe game he mentioned he would love to have this mission saved and then the campaign be brought back on track so that he can continue which is exactly what we're going to do but in order to do that i brought some help in today's mission not today's mission but this campaign rather i am going to be tag teaming this for the first time in saving your design uh, disaster campaign history as tabcat is going to join me and the rules of how we're going to do this is going to be as follows we're each going to play one mission i'm putting them nicely into a playlist so that uh, you can decide whether or not you want to hop between channels or you're just sticking with the playlist so essentially it would be one mission each i'll start uh, then it's his turn and it's my turn again and so on and so forth but there's a bit of a twist the uh, respective person uh, that hands over so i for the first mission he for the next mission can decide what type of team the other person is going to play with including all of the equipment now in the beginning of the game that won't make uh, that much of a difference but maybe we'll, uh, we can see some say uh, unorthodox team compositions so that him and i can have some fun with the safe game it's going to be potentially five to six uh, missions and then this is hopefully safe but let's not get, get ahead of ourselves instead let's jump right into it and start clearing this mission so like i said legendary difficulty uh, a lot of these guys here do have um, oh he had one ranger uh, with uh, the uh, phantom perk and the other rangers apparently are blade masters well this is a squaddy here and fabrizio or fabrio is a um, Blade Storm Ranger, okay. Freshly, freshly recruited and uh, upgraded sniper, just barely squad side. And we got Doom here, who is the skirmisher plus Tiffany Corporal, that is the only source of shredding plus her two grenades. In terms of just e uh, equipment items, we do have grenade, 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 nothing grenade and grenade i'm assuming since he does not have a grenade he might have ammunition oh yeah there we go tracer rounds good we got some ammunition the rest is just winging it without ammunition it seems but tracer rounds aren't bad it's a good start so can't really argue with that good without further ado let's use steel here 
is our scout. Oh, okay. Well, that is a Viper and a mech with armor. Boy, you must be behind the research curve. Holy shit. If we're seeing conventional weapons against those enemies, no wonder why you struggle to stay alive. Okay, well, this is going to be interesting. This is at least month number four. Maybe even mutants in here. But we certainly see advanced troopers soon. This, both of them are month number two and three respectively. So, well, that's going to suck. But the best aiming angles for a sniper could be found right over here. Got it Can't shoot anyway, so might as well just sprint into cover. Doom can take the high ground relatively soon, which is why we're putting them over here with the anticipation of uh, grappling up next turn. Good. We do have two... <coughs> Two rangers that definitely want to get into the face of the enemy, but we can't go here because that would trigger. So we're doing the next best thing, which is waiting just a tiny bit further back. And this is me just playing it safe. We don't have run and gun yet. Shotguns <clears throat> on range are really, really, really bad. But luckily, we can get an Overwatch trap off, thanks to our Phantom Ranger. We knew exactly what was going to come. And thanks to the x engine, we very much know that this is not going to go well. Yeah, focus. Shotguns are not good at range, I told you, buddy. Definitely not a good idea. If we're unlucky, the other pack will add as well. Looks like over here. There we go. Now we're going to be overrun. There's no question about that. It's just a matter of how badly are we going to get overrun. And here are reinforcements. Li Mei Zhu, the Titan, is joining us. I'll put her into an aggressive position. And look, we need to focus on the max first. Shred them and then get them down. Oh, a couple of good grenade spots here, but I think we're going to start with the max. Because micro missiles are an absolute bane of our existence. Time to grapple up here, which is likely going to trigger the third pack, but I need high ground. Good. Mechs are looking slightly, slightly injured. Okay, well, our chances of hitting them are not very good. Need to take and accept half cover here. Good, that'll kill one and injure the mech uh, so much so that we can kill it. I'm just trying to take enemies off of the table for now. Good. One down, thousands to go. That's a solid kill. Alright, 
fantastic. We still got a couple of grenades. And Neil is going to use that <clears throat> because the mech is still a problem. And like I said, you got to be really careful with your target selection. Not sure if we're going to use uh, our Phantom Ranger yet because it would trigger that other pack. I don't like what I'm seeing. We're going to get retaliated on. He can't really do much, but uh, the Viper will likely uh, poison spit and bind. I'm just trying to spread out to not make it too oppressive. And I'm, as you can see, Staying out of uh, the vision range of this pack just barely. Thanks to the <coughs> Phantom Ranger, we're actually doing reasonably well. Can we reach this guy, please? Please. Come on. Please. Alright, the answer is no. Little change of plans here. Can't kill the mech because we can't reach it. So time to get that officer down. And we could hope for crit. I mean, it's potentially the still the best choice. Not a great turn, nah. Because we just barely couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, reach the mech. And had I positioned myself here where we could have reached the mech and killed it, I would have opened myself up for a nice little poison spit equally as uh, as bad and therein lies the problem sometimes you have no great opportunity you only have bad options available luckily the viper just tries to move in that's to our advantage uh oh oh All right, micro missiles, not the worst. More enemies, that is, however, the worst. <clears throat> that is the worst. Good, and there's another pick right over there. It's getting dicey. Shen, thank you. We know what the mission is. You guys need to learn to at least sometimes shut up and let us do our job. Really, it's that simple. All right, so Blade uh, Master Ranger Snake Fabrizio Ritz. Eh? is uh, going to teach that viper a scaly lesson there we go got an alarium core on top of it good job fabrizio you're the man may is charging in and may there be an option to explode the mech and the guy downstairs. I'm using efficiency here. First and foremost, I know that the gas pumping stations can explode. So naturally what we're going to do, what just, just happened is I damaged it. It fell down, additional explosion damage from uh, the uh, gas pumping station on top of it. That other gas pumping station exploded, so triple damage for it, initial grenade damage, fall damage, and then on top of it, gas station damage, and this gas station here exploded and killed the other one. One action, two entire uh, enemies killed. Uh, 
if you've played the game for long enough, then you will know that that definitely is possible. And you can get those little efficiencies whenever needed. And here, it seems, in this campaign, it seems like it's desperately needed. Can move on uh, and theoretically <clears throat> take these guys out of cover. I think that's not the worst idea. The reason why I'm moving on first is because this guy can very much explode. And you know how it is, right? When things are exploding. Whenever they can explode, they will explode. <laughs> okay, well, those tracer rounds didn't really work out so well, did they? We move over to here. Eh, nah. That's a flanked position. Move over to here. Still a flanked position. I don't like either of them. And did we aggro this guy? I don't think so. I think these two are the only ones that are aggroed for now. No, I think he is. Let's be honest, otherwise he wouldn't stare at, at us. Could move to here, that would still be flanking, but very aggressively though. Gotta remove the cover, and unfortunately that's one of the few ways of how we can do that. Okay, fantastic, that worked out well. Put charge in. Uh, that's not the Bladestorm Ranger, unfortunately not good enough. Uh, that looks a bit suicidal. If we move to here, the only one that could flank us is the Viper, but it will likely do that. Back here is surprisingly open as that position is. We would not be flanked. And even the Mac can't really reach us. It's not a great position. I don't like it, but it's the only position that flanks for sure. And I need to make sure that this guy actually goes down. Unfortunately, we don't have him placable yet. So there is kind of no follow-up, really. Good. We're slowly moving in, and you guys know how I feel about shotguns in the open. Not really a great alternative. But luckily for us, they are hitting well today. Moving over, I gotta be careful here. And what I will do, though, is teach this sector a lesson and remove some of the cover. Three points of damage plus five uh, plus two points of falling damage and removed cover. So not great, but not bad either. Viper is again trying to move up. Sector is trying to do the same. And I'm sure we're get, going to get some fire. Yep, Skirmisher took some damage. <clears throat> we're down to the wire. Commander, I'm sending reinforcements in from the Avengers reserves. Commander, the situation just got worse. Resistance outposts are reporting enemy transports on the move across this region. Good, let's start with the mech. Moving into full cover, we gotta shred it. 
And we got a shredded good. There we go. Well done. Back here, a shotgun to the face seems uh, the only adequate way of dealing with the situation. Good job. We got an engineer, and why did you spec combat protocol, dude? Okay, we gotta go absolutely back to the basics. It seems that you have watched too many misleading XCOM videos. The tactic hasn't helped you. And... Uh, might use uh, this playthrough in order to go over some of the basics of how to deal with these situations. Good. Fabrizio moves a bit closer. Time for a reload, and as you may or may not have seen, we have actually cleared out the first wave of uh, these heretics. Well, not fully. Apparently there was a last pack. But I tell you what, we might be able to salvage that over the next two turns. Stun lancers will definitely charge in. That won't be an that won't be a nice visit. <clears throat> More enemies are incoming. Got to hold our ground here, use the sniper in order to get the beacon and then try to evacuate as many of our soldiers as possible. Double stun lancer is a nasty combination. Nice, fantastic hit. And a miss just at the right time. Good job. Oh, ouch. Oh. But we're in a terrible situation, guys. Really, really bad. So, I'll make the executive decision. <clears throat> Fortunately, no autoloader. Just when we needed one more shot of ammunition. How is that possible? Good, moving into full cover with Tiffany here. We still got to stand our ground, unfortunately. Starting with the Stun Lancer. One down, thousands to go. See, that's the problem with open ground. You very seldomly get a good shot. Since backtracking is not an option, I wanted to backtrack, but unfortunately it really didn't work out so well. Since backtracking is not an option, might as well move forward. Start engaging with the targets that we can. Another combat protocol should seal the deal.
Good, moving to here because we're going to take the last shot next turn. We'll cover over here. Time to down that stun lancer. Half cover, closer to the front line. We might lose this skirmisher, by the way. Are we going to eliminate uh, the beacon? That would be a good, a really good shot. We're not wasting anything yet. Uh, moving from full cover to full cover. And dealing some damage on as a consequence of that good i'm trying my very best just to stay in the game here trooper is a low hit point uh, low chance shot not willing to take that Could move all the way up, but likely not a good idea. I need to think about how we're going to withdraw the troops next turn. Lots of injured. We're very likely going to see the first ones die. So I'm setting up the beacon for a kill. And next turn is going to be the exit here. This viper is trying. It's best to just run in. That was foreseeable. Mentioned we're likely going to lose uh, one or two now. That's full cover, by the way, not half cover. And more reinforcements are coming in. Oh, we got a Templar. Love it. First of all, time to break the whole tier. Very good. Well, 60 seconds is 59 seconds too much my dudes moving into cover nice little shot here come on unfortunately that's a grace moving back Titan jumps back. Good, we're moving back in the hopes of yeah, keeping at least a few more alive. So we're effectively one soldier out, and that's a squaddy. Can I argue to leave that one behind? I'm going to get at least shot from uh, the mech. Micro missiles can't kill, can't kill, so we're fine for one more turn. Let's give it a try and see if it works. More enemies are incoming and we do not have medkits nor healing protocol. 
which both would be, mind you, very helpful. We wouldn't have lost an, a soldier if that uh, wouldn't have been the case. But if you go and play all aggressive, then you don't need to be surprised if that just doesn't work out. It's like playing the Demon Hunter without any defense in Di Diablo 3. Yes, you can try to always evade, but there will be the one time where you, where the game does not allow you to do that, and you will deeply, deeply regret it. Trying to get another kill here. Okay, well, game clearly tells us uh, that this is it. Let's try to get the Overwatch guy to remove Overwatch. There we go, 40%. Ah, didn't work out. In order to secure our operative, who now needs to sprint, there's the aid protocol. And the rest is really up to that operative. Neil Woods. You either make it or you don't. Here is the deal. Ooh, very well. And we're lifting off. Goodbye, Cruise, uh, uh, Cruesome World. Not the cleanest of all missions, but um, it was okay and it was uh, quite intense. Could we have saved all of them? Maybe. I wasn't expecting a last pack right at uh, the beacon. My understanding was we've killed every uh, everybody, but uh, so it happens sometimes that, uh, that you're getting surprised. It wasn't the end of the world, but the incoming reinforcements on top of it certainly did not make it easier. Good news though is you will get a new skirmisher very soon. You don't need to worry about it. That's really not the end of the day. We got an Elarium Core and Panjophobia. <laughs> Panic uh, for stand lances. Very understandable, by the way. Starting some bonds here. And now let's take a look what the campaign is all about, okay? Oh, you had a lot of soldiers. Why didn't you use them? And why aren't you bonding your soldiers? That needs to stop. You need bonds, my friend. That's bonus actions right there. By the way, there's a whole theory around who should bond with whom. Don't get too complicated about it. You just want bonds. They are incredibly effective. Why would you? Okay, well, there are many mistakes uh, here. And I'm not sure if I can just get rid of all of them at the same time. So let's take a short look. Uh, clear uh, clearly, you have a deep roster. We're just going to take a tiny look at uh, what you have skilled. So, Shredder and Demolition. Demolition is good. On your specialists, you're going uh, Combat Protocol. <clears throat> and clearly, you wanted to continue on the right-hand side. But let me tell you, and that's a serious lesson. Specifically, if you're struggling on a difficulty, go with the left-hand side, medical protocol into revival protocol, into extra uh, into extra med kits, then uh, threat assessment and guardian for overwatch uh, beauty, and at the end you can either do uh, the discharge or the AOE heal, depending on how much you're struggling. Medical protocol is op. op uh, is obviously and uh, on a non-subjective basis better than combat protocol so objectively better revival protocol is potentially um, rivaling amongst the top skills in the entire game not skilling it 
even though Haywire, Haywire Protocol is nice, this is just simply better. And uh, the extra med kits are certainly good as well. So not doing that already shows that there is a level of misunderstanding or cockiness, which I can't really uh, fathom, specifically if you're struggling. The reason why you failed <clears throat> is partially also due to not taking a specialist with you. In terms of abilities here, rent good, focus good, parry good. You even rolled uh, fortress. That's a fantastic. That's a fantastic Templar right there. Shredder, like I said, is good, and I can see <clears throat> that you're using rangers in order to scout. That's fine as well. So there is nothing. There is nothing inherently wrong with it. You're currently on your way to magnetic uh, weapons. We're April 30s. Oh, look at that. Um, it is actually month number uh, three. Month number three. I was doing you dirty at the beginning. It is month number three and uh, you just started with an incredibly high force rating. Well, that is unfortunate. I can see how you struggle. Uh, that is a bad luck overall. But... I think now we're fine. You go Guerrilla Tactics School into Proving Grounds. Wouldn't go for Proving Grounds immediately. But okay, if you are the type of person that loves uh, Proving Grounds, then that is fine. I can see you're clearing out here. So the build order is generally okay. Resistance ordering into, um, into that. Uh, let's take a another look at your roster. Class-wise... Four Grenadiers, good. Four Rangers, good. Three Sharpshooters, also okay. Two Specialists, that's a critical oversight here. You can't just go in with two Specialists. You you should be training you should be training Grenad um, a Specialist instead of yet another Grenadier. So that's not really good. Work is well Rushing here is fine. And you got yourself an autopsy, clearly, you because of proving grounds, modular weapons, you already got the resistance communication done. And you got the improved conventional weapons. See, and that is a bit of a trap right there that you fell into. The conventional weapon extra damage, good, but it costs 10 days. Mind you, you're currently 10 days away from actually getting magnetic weapons so you could have already had the upgrade uh, but you now chose to be behind the research curve so potentially wouldn't necessarily have done that in terms of items one flashbang is good zero med kits again with 600 supplies this is unacceptable i'm immediately building one you research faceless ones too early, in uh, in my opinion. You need three faceless corpses, so unless you have four faceless corpses, don't even start researching it, because where's the point if you can't build a mimic beacon? So you wasted some time there um, on top of it. In terms of research, what you should have potentially done is skip the skip the conventional weapons, because uh, they have... Unless you wanted to go for a... Conventional weapon, long weapon, uh, stay long in the conventional ballistic uh, tier, upgrade armor, go for uh, something else, rush. And that's a very specific strategy. And then uh, this breakthrough would have been the right play because you would have gotten to a quasi magnetic uh, tier uh, without needing to upgrade further. And then later in the game, you just skip all the way to plasma. That is possible, but it that's more an advanced strategy for someone who has uh, played it oftentimes and not for someone who's trying legendary for the first or second time so a couple of mistakes here uh, that i pointed out in terms of other research typically i would always say go for the smaller research first uh, not having hybrid materials not helpful uh, the lost you don't need the autopsies at the beginning i would potentially also go for the weapon upgrade but i the six days or seven days for the for the um, mimic beacon, as well as the ten days for ballistic weapon, really uh, uh, shown how how crucial it is that you need to instead focus on uh, weapon upgrades or armor upgrades, both of which would have made your mission considerably more easy. And then just looking at all of it, why do you? speed up the proving grounds if 
you can speed up your resistance ring. The two days there really don't make a massive difference unless you're trying to speed run, which you clearly aren't. So resistance ring 50% uh, faster is just incredibly good. Why would you not do that? Specifically, look at that. Reduce avatar progress. You could uh, could do that. You could get a reaper. Yeah. So a couple of a couple of just strategic mistakes that make it uh, more difficult for you <clears throat> to uh, to execute. And if you're then struggling on the tactical layer, of course, it's not going to be helpful. Let's take a look here. You we clearly started with the Templars over here good templar start is a good start i like it you already expanded that's fine i have no idea why you have 600 supplies but um you're getting a lot of income uh, not sure how or why you shouldn't get that much income but okay it is what it is maybe you have uh, edited that uh, in your game typically it should be Far less, but with all of the supplies, you should be fine. Really, uh, it should not be an issue at all. So, let's continue making contact. Which may, ha uh, may happen before the supply drop happens. I still cannot understand how you get that that much income 566 that is crazy and by the way one thing that i need to do i hate to tell it but look one of the most important parts is getting getting your color coding correct um, only having green units on the field really doesn't help you just get some colors i help you by sponsoring you on the Psycon only color coding, which is red for Rangers, uh, yellow for Grenadiers, green for Specialists, and white for Snipers. You are welcome. Rookies get no color. But this gives you a, a little bit of the edge on the battlefield because you don't need to always look. For the individual uh, for the individual unit very good you got a couple of uh, sharpshooters which I appreciate rookie that is green but not green enough there you go. That's the right green. <clears throat> Good. So, finally, everybody's color-coded. There we go. Since we have so much, uh, uh, so much uh, funds to play around, uh, let's also get a smoke uh, bomb because I already know that I will give one to Tapcat in the next mission. <laughs> haven't seen a good utilization of smoke grenades i don't want to troll him so he will get some good equipment but he also needs to use a smoke bomb so got a nice little monthly income and so far we're only dealing with these uh, saboteur Good, that is problematic. High Vigilance needs to be countered. Stiletto rounds are problematic as well. Uh, plus two, Avenger. Okay, look, again, another questions, right? Uh, I do understand why you would want to take Avenger power. Great, cool, no problem. But you did get weak points. Any shredding attack of XCOM does an additional plus one shred. Why exactly wouldn't you take that? It is one of the best uh, resistance orders in the entire game. We're ignoring the supply drop for now. And we're getting some additional 
<clears throat> we're getting some additional location here. Alright. There is another resistance contact down here, which means we would get the ability to get all of Asia. And Proving Grounds finally made its way into the game. Let's choose a project. Shadow Keeper is a fantastic project. I like it. Um, I also like the X, so we're going Shadow Keeper into X because both of them are great. And a Spark would be a nice addition as well. I tell you what, typically I would go Shadow Keeper into X. Uh, but we're starting with a spark because I would like to see a spark in this run. Just to spice it up a little bit for some crazy uh, for some crazy team compositions. Uh, shifting a bit of our work over to the proving ground. It, it's always good to clear out, but um, you also need to uh, strengthen your current uh, forces a bit. So... This here is the better choice. Resistance ring did well so far, so we're doing okay. Let's continue. Another contact, plus one. Fantastic. So, theoretically, we could go here, but of course, we don't have the 160 intel. Starting with the intel over here, because that's what we currently need. I'll leave the uh, supplies right where they are because next year uh, next month uh, the supplies will add up and that means less scanning time overall good got a promotion here and i forgot something quite critical we wasted a few times nothing to be concerned about but i still want to do it we can continue training and what I would want to do is get more specialists in. Good. We would have the Reapers here, which I think is helpful. We can recruit another Skirmisher. Another Engineer. Faction Influence. Hacking. Soldier Bond. I think we're going to go for the Reaper. <coughs> Need a high-level Soldier. Sergeant or higher. Let's go with Jester. And someone can get bonus aim. And what I like to give out as bonus aim is let's use some of the Grenadiers. Because Grenadiers typically have a poor aim progression. So nine days and we're going to be good. Next up, promoting our Prime Sniper here. First of all, Totally wrong color scheme. That's the right one. There you go. Secondly, let's promote her. Dead Eye is okay, but I would always go for Lightning Hands first, as it gives you the better uh, the better chance uh, to deal damage in between, specifically when you need to move. Dead Eye is something that you could skill later. Given that it is a classical sniper, we're going death from above. Quick draw is good as well, so I typically would go long watch into lightning hands into quick draw. Instead of that route, I would get death from above still, but the um, gunslinger route is more effective and more versatile. Got quite a few lightly wounded or wounded or tired individuals, so we got to be careful here. But luckily the game gives us a break <coughs> and there is the first advent facility. Oh, I see he has already done the black side facility. So apparently he had done that because it's no longer, I was wondering where's the black side facility that's no longer there. 
Good job in getting that one down. Good job in getting that one down. But equally with killing that uh, facility, he kind of removed his options to counter the Avatar project. So we got to be a bit careful with, uh, with that. Magnetic weapons come through, which is great. Uh, we could do that, but I would say no. What we need is resistance radio, really, to further our expansion and get continent bonuses. Hybrid materials wouldn't be bad either. And then Gauss weapons. Um, yeah, the problem with Gauss weapons is it, again, takes a couple of days. You know what? Let's difficult decision because we've already committed so much to it and getting that weapon upgrade isn't bad so let's do the gauss weapons next in terms of weapon upgrades we got 30 alloys so enough for rifles and the short gun good good very good which means normal rifles and the shotgun both have their upgrades. And there are our missions. So this here is going to give us a specialist and counters the dark event. It's hacking a workstation. This here is stiletto rounds and neutralizing a field commander. And this here is a protect the device mission. Hmm. Hmm, Tapcat, am I going to give you the protect the device mission? I don't know. I don't know. Um, look, we need specialists at the moment and getting a corporal would be fantastic. And that vigilance is really nasty. So we might as well go in that direction. Although undeniably... Protect the device would be a nice mission. I won't be as as cruel as to hand over a protect the device mission immediately. Let's start with that. And what's the team that we're actually going to take onto this run? So we don't have the spark yet, right? Right? Spark, 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 five days. Okay, that's not going to happen. Instead, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I think we're going to put our Templar here. That's a start. Who's your bondmate? Uh, your bondmate is a specialist. Okay, cool. Templar and specialist. Uh, that's the starter. Um... Then those two, because they are bonded. Should I really give him such a great combination? I think I'm going to be nice for the first mission and will not, will not uh, make it too harsh. So we got a couple of things here. Templar. Oh, you even got an acid grenade. I like that. Good. We're going to go a bit crazier on the equipment. Not ultra crazy, but a bit crazier. So, the Templar gets the smoke grenade. Let's see how he reacts to that. <laughs> We're going to give the 8, uh, the medkit, to our... To our specialist, um, also giving them the legacy weapons, the legacy DLC weapons. Titan here gets a flashbang, as well as a normal frag grenade and the light machine gun. I like that. Sniper 
gets the tracer rounds as well as the marksman rifle and what's left over here you know what a nice acid grenade i like that See, that's actually a pretty, a pretty damn decent uh, loadout. One that you could easily deal with. I, I will tell you what. We're starting with a good one so that it is easy to get into, and progressively over time, I will, I will start um, randomizing it a bit more. So, Profit Crypto, Titan, Apex, and Crash are going to be the ones that Tapcat is going to play with. I will give him a bit of an introduction of what we're dealing with, and uh, this should be a good start. He has a side trip with high explosives, so a lot of explosives at that stage. And he de has a decent team. He unfortunately, and that's a bit troll, but it is not because I trolled, but because the skilling isn't yet done. He does have an, uh, an uh, a specialist with combat protocol and a med kit. So, and we're going to see how well that is going to turn out. Uh, that uh, that poor lady crypto would actually need to move to the next target in order to heal them. But okay, it's all fine. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you stay tuned. I will put, of course, a playlist together with those videos so that it is easier for you to follow. We're uh, potentially going to release uh, these videos in and around Christmas as a little uh, ho 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 Santa gift. And I hope you, as always, enjoy the XCOM content. If that is the case, leave a comment and a like down below. Um, because you're not only saving this disaster campaign together with us, you are also saving the channel from getting rusty and not liked by clicking the like button. Perfect. Take care, guys, and see you in two days. Bye-bye, and off to you, Tabcat.